It is the 98th podcast. 98. Are we doing something big for the big 100? Well, okay, well this is, now it's just going to be a huge letdown. <laughs> I was going to go through the stats. You know, like on Spotify where it does your like year end. Yeah, they actually that. do that for Spotify podcasts. With Spotify? Do, can, do we have access to Apple info? Mm, you got to look. We have access to the host account, which is Buzzsprout. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Okay. So, I'm down. So I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> I do. I'm also interested. <laughs> but that will be not this week, but the next. The next. A little look at, it t- tells me downloads. How many of you listen every time? How many of you have listened more than once? How many of you have listened last year and then listened again this year? Make your podcast poll. Ask who's listened to every episode. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Poor people. Somebody, yes. people I have to pity. Yeah. Um, but welcome to the Baking It Down podcast with Sugar Cookie Marketing, where you will find nuggets of marketing, as Corey <laughs> likes to say. I love saying that. What else can people find? We, on the podcast? Yes. You, you took my word marketing nugget. In life. Now. What can we find in life? <laughs> what can we find? I this. On this podcast, we love to cover what's going on in the Facebook group because if you are not a part of the Sugar Cookie Marketing Facebook group, you need to go request to join in your entry question when it says, how did you find us? Just put podcast. I'll let you jump to the front of the line because I feel bad that you have had to listen to us. So my I'm sorry is letting you in before everyone else. Yeah, you got quite a line There's at a the door. a little backlog. It's not a little backlog. It's anymore. a lot of backlog. It's about 6,600 people. Waiting to just learn these I read every nuggets. entry question, though. Some people don't even answer them. Right. It's problematic. There's a lot of spam on Facebook. And, and just accept all requested <laughs> members is a and welcome. If I did that, the admin team would be like, Corey's yeah, fault. Is rough. So I'm, I'm worried. Okay. Yeah. I'll let them in. Put podcast in your answers. <laughs> okay, that's great. So this week... I said, let me ask Corey the biggest offenses she sees bakers make on social media that is thwarting their sales numbers. If you if you didn't know, I am a lurker. Corey I'm lurks everywhere. Man. <laughs> she is everywhere. And I think because you lurk so much, doom scroll, you will have a bit of feedback as to what you see working, what you see not working, and what are the biggest offenses that are probably robbing from the bottom line. We'll take these with a grain of salt. I mean, marketing is my job. <laughs> if you don't want to run your business this way, you don't have to. Well, we have a list of eight. Heather, just say number one and I'll expound you. upon it. Corey made this list literally three seconds before we started I'm talking. Always, I'm sorry. So this wasn't well thought out. <laughs> I did write it down. She says, not putting your location in your Instagram bio. All right. First off, if you are a business, you should have a business account. You shouldn't be working from your personal profile on Instagram. What about our Finstas? You can work from there. <laughs> you Stop can my like, full time. like your stuff from your Finsta account. Um, but you have two options that you can do under the business umbrella is a business account and a creator account. The creator account was actually made for people who are more of like the influencer type who don't necessarily want to put their home in their in their bio. But if you have a business account, you can actually put – you don't have to do your full address. You can just do like Burke, Virginia. Would you recommend – Okay, let's say the average cottage home baker, should they be categorized as business or creator? My personal opinion is you ne- you should be as a business. I know you get more sounds when you're listed as a creator, um, but we're not really trying to do trending audio all the time. So to explain what Corey's talking about, if you're ever into posting reels or video to Instagram, being listed as a business means you're likely profiting from the content you post. As such, you did not pay for the commercial license usage rights for a lot of the trending audios, which means you can't access it. The workaround is switching switching to a creator profile, which assumes that you're actually not making money from your content, even though most of you are, and then you get access to these commercial licenses. Mm -hmm. So the workaround, if you're like, I do like the trending audio, is in the creator account, you can actually see it on my profile. I have Corey Miracle, then just a line, and it says Lake Ridge, Virginia in there. So I have my, where you can find me in two spots, because I have a business account. In blue, it says Lake Ridge, Virginia, but also where my name is. So if you wanted to stick with the creator account, you could put your location as your name in your bio. Now, I think names and handles are both searchable. Yeah, so I have Mixing Bowl Cookie Company, Corey Miracle, and Lake Ridge, Virginia 
all there listed. Which means when somebody searches for Corey's name or searches for her company name, it's a great thing. And I got to actually give Kimberly a shout out for this one. When you rebranded, she immediately yeah. sent you a DM and she said, hey, leave your old brand name as your name and then your new name as your handle. Yeah. You'll show up in searches for old people trying to find your yeah. new brand. So I just, I think I left it up there for about five months. Smart. And I just took it down. Get recently. that audience. Yeah. you'll When you rebrand, you'll always lose a few people. Um just think about it. If I bought a gift from somebody, you yeah, probably I wouldn't next come year. back <laughs> right. for a whole year, um, assuming that they like the gift. Okay, that is a good one. It's a very simple fix. It is. To just add your location in your Instagram bio, you don't even have to change any categories. Yeah, yeah honestly, just put it somewhere in there. Okay. If you want to do it in your bio, your name, or actually change to a business account, just have it somewhere. It's too, we don't want to jump through hoops. I don't want to have to figure out where you are. I just want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you have your full name in your... I do. I like that. I do. It does add a face to a name. I know a lot of people hide their names on their business profiles. It makes you kind of seem like a blob. I think if people person. can't remember the Mixing Mode Cookie Company, maybe they can remember Miracle. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. I dropped off my car at NTB yesterday. Yeah. And he was like, wow, isn't that a great last name to have? I said, sir, my car's out of alignment. <laughs> I don't think today's I need you to be working some miracles on my tire. (laughs) Okay, number two, your pinned posts on either Facebook or Instagram look ancient is what you wrote. It's true. So I know we've talked about this before on the podcast, but I still see it. Um, You can have a lot of great information on the pin post that you really do want up there. I encourage you to just make a new post. And you're like, oh, Corey, I've already... I've already made that post, and if I just make it again, I'm gonna add. Fa- I'm gonna fatigue my audience. Guess what? A post that already got you all the juice that you just posted maybe two weeks ago, and it's no one's coming to it anymore. Delete your copy from there. Copy and paste the new copy, and then pin one, that one to the top. No one will be any the wiser, <laughs> but it will be at the top now. I was listening to another podcast, and I wish I could remember the lady's name. She was very eloquent. That is not, not us. us. <laughs> Wasn't listening to us. Uh, and she said, hey, stop pinning viral content. She said, I, can I say yeah. I just did this for us? Okay. On Instagram, you can actually pin three reels under your reels category now oh. and three posts oh. on your main thing. So six pin posts. Yeah, that's what it's in. Um, but on TikTok, a lot of people pin their viral videos because you want to get even more views on it. You but may think, well, I don't have a viral content. Anything that outperforms other content, even is, in within just your Instagram uh-huh. profile, would be considered viral to your profile. Yeah, but what you actually want to do, no one's coming to see like, what viral content has this cookie baker <laughs> been up to? They want to know about you. If my content gives enough where they actually click to my profile, my pin post should be telling them about who I am and what I do and what okay. value I bring to them. Let's think of that. We got six places, six pinned options mm-hmm. to to really create a funnel here. So what are the six pinned content types you'd probably recommend? I would say how to order would be a big one. What I would suggest to do, I hate, I hate, I don't care if you do it or not. A lot of times people have a this. highlight And in that highlight is a bunch of like, you know, their stories of how to order, but you have to read so much. Like, I don't got the time to read. What if you did? (laughs) Yeah. What if you did a video? That would be A reel. And then people could just watch it and be like, in order to link in the bio. Okay. So on the feed posts, which are stagnant, they're um, JPEGs. That's an image. Yeah. And the reels posts are MP4s, which is a video file. I would say for these stagnant images probably your booked calendar of that month Mm -hmm. don't make it look that's a good one i would also say upcoming events list for the month maybe classes classes uh, farmers market sales and the third one maybe a how to order but i don't want the graphic to just be a ton of words i want it to be something that catches the eye and the copy to be how to order yeah now on the reels think about this about you you talking about your business and yourself yeah, I'm. Hey, Please I'm Corey. In. I'm in Lake Ridge, Virginia. Ooh, I like specialize that. in custom sugar cookies. Maybe another reel about the ordering process. Hey, I just wanted to give you a heads up. You have to book two weeks out in advance. And here's what happens: we go back and forth a bit. We nail down the best designs ever, and then I'll send you that invoice, and then I get yeah. to shopping. Something that gives me peace of mind. And I think the last one would be like, even though my pictures are pretty on here, please go check out my Facebook reviews and my Google reviews. Ooh, uh, you know, what's it called when you get people voting for you and it makes you feel like you should order from them? Popular? No, that would be good though. Credible. Uh, Huh? Credible. 
incredible is very close to the word I'm looking for. Incredible. Very <laughs> close. Word. I don't remember what the word is. Well, you know, when you reinforce the belief that you're trustworthy and you post reviews and it's a fancy buzzword and I can't remember. So we're going to sound unfancy. Okay. With incredible. All right. Validating. No. No, that's no. not even close to the word credible. Hold on. Credentials. No, nope. we're still <laughs> very close to the word credible. Okay, moving along. That is a good one. Now, now, let me throw this in. A lot of us have rolled over into the new page experience on Facebook. We just it's rolled weird. everything over. It's weirdly great. It's hard I, to get used can to. Can I say I do like it? You're an upper five today, and I'm feeling it. Thanks. It's because I got my new pair of on clouds. <laughs> okay. Remember, Corey got the 150? Okay. I want to let you guys know, I did go buy the she on clouds. She was influenced. And gave me a blisty wisty, but I'm powering through it. Look at my new socks. Is that? Did you wear the on clouds today? No, I gotta let the blister heal. You can't just go <laughs> back to back blister shoes. <laughs> Heather wore a brand new pair of shoes on like a fifty mile walk. You can't do that. Five miles. You gotta stand around the house a little bit and, and went crazy. Them in. And you know, okay, here's the thing: by the time the blisty shows, you're already far from home. Yeah, I'm limping back. Yep, I'm li- I'm, li- I'm dragging my left <laughs> leg behind me, trying not to use it. And you know when you ever have that thought, like, should I walk barefoot home? But That's then the pebble. little rock it's pebble. It's freezing outside. It's very nice. Your little, there. your little toesy woesies haven't seen a grass blade or a little tiny <laughs> rock in years. <laughs> they have seen a baby foot pass. So. <laughs> so on cloud, thank you. I think I did tell Gams indeed about it. Yeah, it's our aunt. Uh, they were enamored with the refund story. So, Free shipping came in record time. You know who I didn't tell them about? Uh-uh. Keyless entry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keyless entry. <laughs> Which I still haven't had a resolution on. Okay. Uh, this is your number three. I think this is a big one. Just posting photos on TikTok. Not posting video content. No catch. No hook. And then there's just a word no. Yeah. <laughs> It's a big thing to know what your audience requires on different social medias. It While you can post our great staged photos onto TikTok, that is not what TikTok wants to consume. They want to consume videos with hooks. Vertically filmed videos with hooks. And I'm going to put through it in 60 seconds. I know you can do up to 10 minutes now. <laughs> My husband was like, why are you talking so fast in all of your reels? Are you trying to get under a certain Absolutely. set? I said, it has to be under 60 seconds. And he was now, like, you don't breathe. <laughs> Corey's ta- that's the funny thing. What Corey's talking about is Instagram reels. TikTok has a more loose time constraint. But I will say a lot of people don't want to consume long form content on no, there. I don't. I love it. But If I get to a TikTok and someone's like, Here's five things you should never do when you walk on the moon. Hi, my name is Moonwalker. I'm like, ah, well, you lost me at the your The thing <laughs> is, a good hook starts off with, a list can be a good hook. The hook's great. It's yeah. the intro that loses you, me. What they want you to do instead of like, hi, I'm Corey with the Mixing Bowl Cookie Company here in Lake Ridge. They want your video to be so good that you click to my profile, and I read my will. bio, and go to my pin post to find out who I am. You can see it. It's also a symptom on not only TikTok, but also Reddit threads. When a thread or post goes viral, and then the next post where you're trying to get yeah. as an audience more context, and it starts with... Really didn't think this would go by well. Really crazy. Thank yeah, you guys so thank much. You guys I don't. For all my new I don't followers. care. I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm extremely yes. nosy. Yeah. So it's really having a strategy in place. While you're like, no, I'm checking the box and I'm posting to TikTok like you told me to. I'd rather you skip doing that strategy because when people pass over your content, it's telling the algorithm this content isn't good. Mm-hmm. I want people to stay and mingle with your content versus just posting up photos because that's all you have. Keep in mind, while what comprises these algorithms is way advanced, more advanced than Corey and my little pea brains could yeah. understand, but it's also secretive. Things that they do say indicate that content is worth watching is how long somebody watches a content. Yeah, and you can how see. How they touch the content. Do you like it? Do you save yeah. it? Do you share it? Um, do you, How quickly you scroll past that content. Yeah. And all this stuff, that's what the hook does, is to try to get people to stay just a little longer. Yeah. If you're not familiar with Facebook ads, there's an, even an ad targeting option that's if they watched more than three seconds of the intro. And that shows you yeah, that Facebook, these platforms are watching everything you do, and it's watching everything your audience is yeah. doing. I mean, you can overplay a hook, but a hook, if you just want an example, would be like five things that went wrong for me today, and number four is going to blow your mind. Now oh, you're going to <laughs> you're gonna stay to hear what happened with number four, or just 
a lot of people do a day in the life of like you don't have enough content to talk about what you're doing but people will stay tuned for a day in the life of baker never even knew what bakers do all day so i'll stay and look at that but that is content that is visual um that people can interact with so i highly suggest giving the content that's required for that platform to that platform yeah hooks it don't overthink what hooks are hey i had the, the worst thing happened to me today is a hook what does that sound? I think it is a trash truck. The trash truck? My goodness. Oh, it, it's definitely the trash truck. He's getting ready to, he's got the grabber out. And that thing is. Oh, gee, is this the automated one? Yeah. Where the grabber mm-hmm. doesn't work? It does. The it thing is. will swing that trash oh, around. Oh, wow. It's so aggressive. So aggressive. Back to hooks. Okay. Speaking of hooks. Yeah. <laughs> he hooked on the trash, trash truck. Is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, don't overthink hooks. Think of stuff that stops your scroll. If you can audibly hear it, that would be the hook. So anything that starts. You know, obviously the things that I'm interested in uh-huh. or anything that's like, you won't believe this. This is crazy. A weird hook that works and I kind of hate it is watch till the end. You know, when I see that now, I, s- I will <laughs> scroll. Yeah. I'm like, you now- don't tell me what to do. I'll watch if I want to. <laughs> yeah. Right. I agree. Okay. Number four, no email capture. Oh, yeah. If Facebook goes down and you don't have an email. Remember that day? Yeah. And right. a lot of people are like, I'm SOL. Right. Just so on our podcast. For. What does it mean? Out of luck. Oh, it does. Yeah. What do you think of it? Sure, out I of luck. No <laughs> idea. Just, just, darn oh. it, out of luck. Okay, so I'm funny. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was actually like a good English term. <laughs> I'm just sold today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so no email capture. Now it is. You can do email capture as a link in bio. If you're like, well, then I don't have a website right now. You could use a job form to collect emails, but you can also use Linktree to connect to MailChimp's signup forms, which are technically free. And it's a great way to build a list directly to your email sender. So when they go to your signup form, it'll just say sign up here to get an email and it adds it to the list ready to tee up when mm-hmm. you want to send that email, even if you're like, well, Heather, this one doesn't apply to me. I don't do email marketing. No, but you will. In time, with good marketing sense, you will make time to start sending emails. They're a great Emails way. are one of the highest converting things. When it I comes bought to something today from an email. What did you buy? You're going to judge me. A Shakti headband. Heather. A Shakti mat. Stop. Has a headband. Like, does it go on the front uh-huh. of your head? You're going to have little imagine? dots in your head. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, if you've ever laid on a shocking mat, it's just dots everywhere. But I feel like you don't want to have dots in your head. Yesterday I had a headache, probably because I walked a ton. You know what? And I laid on the Shakti pillow, which has about that too. And it really did relieve the headache. Because yeah, you had more pain in the yes, back of your head. Yes, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Shine me out. I'm going to strap myself in prickles. Yeah. But an email capture is correct. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you bought something from an email? Oh, I check emails all the time. Yeah. All the time. I unsubscribe from them, but I'm also checking them as I unsubscribe, Absolutely. and then I'll sign up to new ones. Sometimes there's a look. I was uh, Sephora emailed me, and I just went to the Sephora site and just started adding to cart. <laughs> I didn't check out though. <laughs> just, wait, I just felt rich for a second. Idea. <laughs> I love to go to Etsy emails and add stuff to cart, and then I leave. <laughs> and, and I know it doesn't always feel natural. Like, can I have your email? I want to buy a watch? But what I saw someone do in the Cookie College a couple weeks ago was they did a contest. If you sign up for my email list today, one person who signs up, it's going to get a free dozen cookies or a free diy kit mm-hmm. heather thinks i said diy i was is just DIY. I, I felt like my it's almost like a dewey <laughs> a dewey kit a dewey kit <laughs> just watching your mouth diy move. it's because they say it's a diy 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 um number five cross posting from instagram to facebook and still including hashtags we have talked about this before but Facebook and Instagram actually make it super easy. Sometimes I accidentally do it, but it, it's because it toggles it now. It wants the toggling you to. Is strong, people. Yeah, it is. But what we don't want you to do is post what you posted to Instagram to Facebook because when I see that wall of 30 hashtags, nothing tells me that the business owner has checked out more than a small caption, three dots, and 30 hashtags. I would almost say this mm. let me be so bold. Be so bold. Natively post to Facebook and then cross post to Instagram. Yeah. That and add your, if you're not add your hashtags. Idea, but if you're going to be like, hey, I'm just yeah, kind of you're like, I don't even in. care about hashtags. Yeah. Starting with Instagram and cross posting it to Facebook with a pasted wall of irrelevant hashtags and then the periods to add the yeah. weird line breaks. Like the those periods used to be an old style of I line know. breaks. You don't need to do those anymore. Yeah, they did it with a couple of years ago, they did away they with did it. Away so when I see it, it, I'm like, oh. There's so many dots. Travel back in time. <laughs> so nothing screams. I'm not really on Facebook right now. Like the dot, dot, dot 
line break, line break, line break, and then a wall of hashtags. Now, with the new page experience, I really doubt that hashtags will still hit. No. They do okay in groups, but I don't think hashtags in the general I search just, on Facebook I think is they're, they're hit or miss if they, they work. They do really well on Instagram. They just don't yeah, do it for well sure. on Facebook. I don't see it changing anytime soon either. Yeah. If when you they, wanted to post from Facebook's planner – yeah, into and post both I, there. I think planners now are the, best the planner. Do you see what the planner does now? It says now you can do individual content for both. Perfect. Yeah. So you and and if you didn't know, you can actually to make, do your to hashtag. Even save it more time. Yeah. You can create this first post to post to both. So yeah. you make yes. This, then toggle it on and then add the uniqueness to the right. But it'll have already pasted in the original yeah. content. Yeah. Yeah. And if you even want to save more time, okay. Take go to your notes. Put your little hashtags yes. in there. And then copy and paste it. You can put it in the comments section of Instagram. It still works. Now, what do you think? 15 hashtags, 30 hashtags, three hashtags? You know, I always, I did a test using two hashtags and okay. 15 hashtags. The more hashtags did get me more reach. Now, is it more targeted reach? It's not as targeted. Here's that weird thing, and that's the algorithmic debate. Mm-hmm. Is more reach better in reaching the audience that you even want to sell to? There's a whole hashtag yeah. strategy in the cookie college where I really dive in deep to having a good mixture of the two. Mm. I mean, 10, 10, and 10. So, I mean, we have 30 hashtags you can use now. I would rather you have more local hashtags that aren't dead hashtags okay. and then sprinkle in some of those popular cookie hashtags just and to get the likes from should them. Should we then sprinkle in some content-specific hashtags? I, I think content-specific ones do well, um, but someone would have to be looking for it. So if I did a Valentine's right. Day cookies... Well, let's say you did a... a Valentine's Day cookie and I have corgi in it. I would want to. I would say corgi hashtag hashtags. corgi cookies. Yeah. So if someone's on Instagram, that. I'm sure is something. Yeah. But what I'm tr- probably helping because that's how I search for inspo <laughs> is like I, I look up corgi's cookies. cookies and I was like, oh, that's a good one. But I'm another cookie. <laughs> oh, that's what somebody had written in the baking group. They were looking for inspo. I think it was a cake, not a cookie. But someone was like, just search the hashtag. Yeah. But a lot of people aren't using those hashtags correctly, so you only have yeah. like five corgis I mean, on the corgi hashtag. At the end of the day, we can only do with what we have. Yeah, but I like to do some that are tailored to what I'm doing. Keep in mind, people, if there's no hashtags on your content, it is unsearchable. It is unsearchable. The only the people who follow you are the only people who that can see it. Is. So if you are like, I would like more reach, you're going to have to use a hashtag. I oh, know. I like hashtag. hashtag. I mean, it's annoying to type out every single time. Apple doesn't save my past use mm-hmm. hashtags. You know what? Um... Andrea, who we went to lunch with a couple weeks ago, she posted photos that she took with an iPhone. Amazing. I got to say, I said, girl, what, what Canon product? (laughs) And she was like, iPhone 15 million. (laughs) I said, wow, that's impressive. Wow. The the blur, the focus, the color. I'm going to have to play around with this sucker. Really, really play with that. I mean, she was outside on a very bright day, so she had a plenty of light, but it was pictures of kids with eating those lollipop cookie sticks thing. I was like, wow, that's impressive. Me and Miss Samsung will zoom in on the moon. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the new Samsung is like, you can zoom in. Yeah, to what? The pimple that you're not hiding (laughs) on my face? Uh, You have number six, making links to buy very hard to find. Now, I think this is a Facebook offense. Instagram already makes it hard to find. Well, Instagram, we only got one. <laughs> link for, in bio. I want to say folks who put their link in the post on Instagram, no one can click it. And no. I can't not copy. Not even in a comment. Can't, back to the link. can't even copy and paste it. If the link does not exist in your bio, it is unclickable on that app. Mm-hmm. Unclickable. I think you can do it in your stories too. But if I'm oh, yeah. consuming your information via the feed, I don't want to go searching. Don't send me to your stories to watch a book. Have it in both places. Yeah. yeah. Have it. So if you say, well, I only get one link on Instagram, where should I link it to? That's where Linktree and I think you and I use Shorebee yeah. help. They are essentially uh, online menus. Uh, not food menus. Sounds delicious, though. <laughs> but like directories. So, so say if I wanted to send someone to my custom order page or my cookie classes page, mm-hmm. I have two links there. So I would use something like Shorby or Linktree, and it would open up and they could choose which one versus right. just sending them to one or the other. And Right. So a lot of times when you're on Instagram and someone says, uh, you know, where did you get this? And they'll say, it's my links in my bio. Then you'll go to that link tree and then they should have it highlighted, yeah. especially if a content type is going viral. Yeah. I do see a lot of cookiers put the link in an Instagram caption. Not homework like, there. That is- nobody, nobody. Let me stress you, no one Someone is going have to, to type that. It. 
over, right? No. Could mm-hmm. you imagine? Yeah. Typing an entire URL. No, I'd have to go back and forth. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I would fat finger something. I yeah, guarantee I it. I already fat finger the things I want to look up. Um, so when we go to, now you say, okay, well, they're just talking about Instagram. I'm actually talking about Facebook here. Mm. So what I see happen, especially with pre-sales, pre-sales, is people will be like, does anybody want to buy this? And people are like, I'm super excited to buy this. And then you're like, look for another post down the road yeah. with the links on how to buy yeah. this. So, okay, you've already got their reach. Then you make the second post and you're like, nobody bought. Right. They didn't see it. They were still on the old post. Yeah. And then you go and then you say to people in the comments, let's pretend somebody's like, oh, I'm interested by this. And you say, look for the link coming out soon. They're not looking. They're, They're not. too busy trying to take pictures of you their You had kids. their attention for those five seconds and you lost it. Right. So you can say, Heather, well, I accidentally already posted my pre show What do I do? Go back to that post. And with everybody who said they're interested, uh-huh. I want you to paste in that link. I want you to paste in that link with a little bit of copy saying, hey, Susan, I know you said you're interested. I have finally launched a product. Here's a direct yeah. link. You don't even have to. Sometimes people are like, when, again, two links to purchase, right? Uh-huh. Two, I'm sorry, two clicks to purchase. Yes. <laughs> two links to purchase. <laughs> <laughs> make the funnel really long. <laughs> <laughs> two clicks to purchase. Uh, first, let them click to your website. Make that directly to the product. Mm-hmm. And then the next click, add to cart. Yeah. Don't make him jump in through hoops. Don't make me go to your landing pages and scroll down past your booked calendar to find this class. Then click to the class. And then I have to read your class copy. And then I have to click here to find the specific class. Yeah. And then I, that's Do so you many see, clicks. You're taking too many seconds away from them. We are a microwave mindset people. We want things in 20 seconds or less. Right. So if you can give people the directest link to the product that mm-hmm. you're flirting around with that is going to convert a lot higher than making us go and then just sending a, them to your website and be like have a you know it's a corn choose maze. your own know. choose your own journey will they find the cookie <laughs> or will they be lost forever if it may if you make that's why i hope everyone realizes why amazon is so dangerous to your wallet is because it's so no lexus like just just say buy it and i'll choose something off of your wow. save list no. <laughs> what are you what are you choosing <laughs> it'll show up like the most expensive thing. because okay think about this a uh, big 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 feature of instagram is that it's extremely searchable so back to the on clouds mm-hmm. uh, i want you what do you think i typed in to find a sock with the back higher higher sock back higher sock back. Wrote. <laughs> and it came up with the socks that had the back heel part higher i don't even know the words to use today but because of maybe ankle the, sock i didn't want an ankle sock you know they have it with just, calf sock no I don't want a calf <laughs> sock. I want an ankle back calf <laughs> sock. Uh, but because Insta- or because Amazon makes it so simple to search, makes it very intuitive. So if I type in a very weird set of keywords, uh-huh. it can still likely pair me up with the product I'm searching uh-huh. for. And then it has buy now with one click. Yeah. You Two did say clicks. Instagram right before you said Excuse that. Me. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. I'm all over the map. You really are. All over the map with my new high back socks. <laughs> but making it easier allows people not to have buyer's remorse because <laughs> mm-hmm. you bought it yeah. and you don't get to talk yourself out of it. Um, I you love know when what, something's you like. You know what's coming out? What? Amazon Prime buttons on non Amazon sites. Wow. Yeah. So Prime buys you that quick click and protection on sites, not Amazon. TikTok I watched today talking about Amazon Prime. This man says that his elderly parents don't have Amazon Prime or Amazon. They just sent him what the, what they kind of want. He orders it and sends it to their house. When they were looking at something, it was $42. When he went and searched the same item on his Amazon Prime account, because they don't have Prime, it was $5 less. So it's almost like mm. the incentive to keep him prime right. is it's cheaper. Also the fast shipping. Gams makes me do that. Now they're doing away with fast shipping though. Yeah. Okay. I know. I it's still fast. I, I did get my ankle back high socks quickly. <laughs> I feel like I've never gotten something that's taken like forever. But I always look for the prime sign. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Amazon has gotten online ordering as close to instant gratification as possible. You know what Ashley said? And I kind of agree with her okay. about Amazon. She says, I will not buy makeup from Amazon because right. it feels like it sat on a shelf for about well, five that's years. that's the doubt that was implemented when people started saying, hey, the consistency, the colors yeah. are different across these brands. I agree. As if Sephora is like, we just Remember when this I for you. bought that Dr. Jart you and zinc stuff? Summer I had. ordered it and I said, wow, this stuff is not absorbing into my face, but you loved it. But but we went and Summer's consistency was so different. Yeah. But then I went to Aveda and the chapstick one is gritty and one is not. Uh-huh. 
It's not you just perfect. don't know. You just don't know. But once you get that little seed of doubt, yeah, because now hard I'm like, I don't want this makeup that's been sitting out for like, a okay. So this vir- this product that's been on, I like the skincare subreddit, but I've been on the skincare subreddit for years uh-huh. and years. They like this snail mucin. Yeah, it's become big. <laughs> yeah. However, I've had it for years. You don't use it. I used it for years. You still use it? Absolutely. And it's, you love it? Yeah. I don't know. Somebody What's it doing me, for you? I don't know. Nothing. We were asleep. <laughs> I just like to believe it works. So Ashley gets hit in a viral TikTok course RX, yeah. this snail mucin thing. If you're wondering if it has snail jelly, it's absolutely from snails. Ew, gross. Right? I don't know. It doesn't smell like anything. I think they need to change the name. If they change the name to gel moisturizer, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but Ashley's like, yeah, I don't want to order from Amazon. I feel like it's going to be like this sitting on the thing. But I've only ever ordered from Amazon That's for That's why years. it hasn't worked for you. Um, you look old. <laughs> the snails are old. <laughs> Um, wild product. But, okay, so making links hard to find. Think of Amazon. If you can channel your inner Amazon and realize how simple. If you look at an Amazon sales page, a product page, uh-huh. it is the ultimate squeeze page. And why they call them squeeze pages because it's squeezing the money out of your wallet <laughs> as you roll it out. First, you get a bunch of photos. Yeah. The photos explain what the product is. You get a breakdown of the unit pounds. At the very top, you get the reviews, which I always yeah, I love click it. on, the little star thing. Then you get a and a section. You get similar products. And now they have that comparison section. Yeah. This product compared against others. Skip past that one. I've yeah. already got the product. And then we go down to the reviews where people put pictures. I, I love the pictures. And it tells you, did this person buy a verified yeah. purchaser? Yeah. I love, I love that. I don't know if they're verified, but I love seeing Not the verified clue, side. But I really Really, I will say I am very swayed by the review section on Amazon. If you, you have, just don't if know. you have over four thousand reviews, I'm going to buy you, regardless of how your one stars look. <laughs> uh, at the top, if there's any coupons, it's highlighted in green. You know, yeah, apply to checkout. Save quick five ordering. dollars, quick here. It really helps me convert. Yeah. And then you can have the subscribe and save, which I never do. I never but do. I like no. the thought of it. I don't want something coming at me if I don't know I'm going to like it. Yeah. Right. But look at that whole Amazon page it has is very easy to order. I even think the buy now button, if you're on desktop, scrolls down with you. Like for oh, let's so down <laughs> to see if you're sure. Are you, not are you sure? Um, so yeah, really interesting product. And then you get the product description. And in the description, it can write very compelling copy depending on the seller. Yeah. Interesting stuff interesting. for sure. Uh, so the con- Channel your inner Bezos when you're writing your sales pages. You know, what are people interested in? They're not likely interested in you if they're about to make a purchase for a cookie class. They're interested in what the cookie class has first. So instead of being like, I started teaching cookie classes five years ago. It was a long time ago when it's a gleam in my mother's eye. What they want to say is you're going to have a blast on Saturday. We're making six cookies. You're going to look like a pro. (laughs) Right. And yeah, exactly. And here's what you're going to get. What you know. Yes. Um, number seven, Instagram bios that say fully booked, but they're out of date. You guys are sleeping on your bios. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing my lurking sesh, I'll go to click over to see what's in your bio and it will be like, really book till December 31st like, of 2022. But like, mm. we're at the end of January. Yeah, um, 2022 is a world away from me. Now. It's so easy to forget about a bio. So don't feel bad on yourself. Um, because there's nothing alerting you to like, Someone hey, DM'd the cookie college and was like, you have the old prices. <gasps> shame on you. you yeah fix that but i feel you like you had me. it wrong in the powerpoint yesterday as well no i did it oh okay nice <laughs> i can see it with my tiny phone <laughs> <laughs> so your eye broke looking at the future <laughs> But having your bio up to date is makes you look like a present business owner and it really provides confidence into your end user being like, oh, this person, they're here. They're going to take my money and not run with it. Right now, I'll, I'll tell on myself, the Sugar Cookie Classes website, out of date. It's still all 2022 out of, stuff. Out I, out know, I know. I like, know I'm leaving my end table. Do as we say, not as but we But the do. Sugar Cookie Classes Instagram oh, you looks look slaying, stellar, man. Slaying. Stellar. It looks great. I'm growing our local audience there. One account at a time. See it. Promote it on. Promote it on. Promote it on. <laughs> That's the question. Leave promote it on. I just leave it right on. now because it does bring attention to it. If I go to a comment section and it's 100% promoted on, I think the It's because I'm the using a Virginia owner. hashtag. I know, stop. I know I need to. It's yeah, called my local I audience. Think, I think so many promoted on people are using that hashtag that people are stopping to use it. We'll have to find which one. Well, whatever. It's a cookie class. It's not rocket science. Hey. It's cookie style. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. A big one for me, even though this is Corey's list, okay. inconsistency in posting. Inconsistency. It is, it is hard to get busy and forget about social media because you're like, Heather, I'm dedicated to fulfilling my orders to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. However, nothing screams, warning, don't buy, 
like somebody who hasn't posted to their Instagram in a really long time and suddenly gets crazy yeah. and posts a ton. Uh-huh. Makes me feel like you're going to do a disappearing act Houdini style yeah. yet again. And will I get my order? Now, a lot of times we see the results of inconsistent posting in the sugar cookie marketing group when people say, I made a post. I don't think anyone's seeing it. Yeah, you hadn't made a post for two months before. Nobody's seeing it <laughs> yeah. now. Instagram wants to reward content creators, and mm-hmm. content creators need to post consistently. I will say on Facebook, and I know Heather spoke on it once, I was posting I always post consistently, but my oh, consistently uh, see, uh, looks a little maybe different. Maybe I'll be Corey. <laughs> I am trying to help these people. Anyways, Facebook said, you've unlocked extra reach yeah. because you had higher engagement. I saw that. I don't it know really, if it worked, though. You know what? I was reading an article at Facebook Meta. The platform is hemorrhaging so many people that they've yeah. signed a $10 million contract, which is not a lot. Yeah, I know. With BuzzFeed. To kind of pay into more content creation because remember the heyday yeah, the of Facebook. The feed is so the take this quiz to see yeah. what French fry type yes. you are. My my mother in law still does. Yeah, it. they want them to bring back their user base. Uh, but it was I so agree. crazy. I hate it. See, they're like, this is my marble color. Uh, my my mother in law will rejoice. <laughs> she she loves those quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> She's a sad Sagittarius. <laughs> Which sex is this? But then the one with the dog. The I never watched it. You show. didn't? No. Oh, it was so never. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should consider it. It's a great like Maybe let it play. Do not have ever. the same no. shows. Like I don't never watch The Office. I did. Never I watched, watched Sex and the City. But you watch are we even allowed to say that? I don't know. <laughs> SOL. <laughs> I didn't watch SOL on the street. No, we I saw the other day and I haven't seen it in so long. PG thirteen. It is. Okay. G. Kick. Remember when we said what's your kick? No, that's yes. yeah. I Back in it, the day. Yeah. No, it's, I think people switch to WhatsApp. Yeah, I think so. Meta. I don't know what happened to Kick. <laughs> Did he get bought out? Kick? No, oh, I, I literally never had a Kick profile. We said, what's your Kick? Kick? K-I-K. With, what, and then what happens at the end? After I think it was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me Google it. Did somebody give you a Kick? <laughs> I think someone gave me their app with a handle you give them. To communicate. Kick. Yeah, I think so. You had a Kick? I've never I had asked a somebody kick. for a Kick. <laughs> so I never gave a Kick out. Messaging and chat. <laughs> What's your kick? <laughs> uh, in the cookie college, uh, somebody said, hey, can somebody help me identify what's decorating this cake? It was a cake question. Mm-hmm. And then, and it was an MTV-themed cake. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at it, and, you know, the picture is pixelated, but she's like, I don't know what this stuff is. Yeah. So I said, a floppy disk, a <gasps> CD, no! and a cue phone. <laughs> She's like, thanks so much. I was born in 1998. And I don't know what all this stuff is. I said, well, I said, a pet, also called a Tamagotchi. I told Arch, I said, Our, my phone used to light up to my ringtone. <laughs> you remember when you had ring backs? Oh, yeah. Where you could call somebody and I song so reply? wanted it to be like a Britney Spears song, but I knew we'd get in the <laughs> Me, 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 me. And then the game, Snake. <laughs> Probably that was right. the only game. Me right. and Heather had flip phones, and I was on it all the time. One day, I got that bill up so high. Yeah. It was 10 cents a text. Uh-huh. Nothing I was Unless saying was, was worth this. Remember when cents. they can send you a text after a certain hour, and it would be free? I think it was after 8 p.m. What? Pit? Yeah, back when we had those ones with the little color in the corner. The, the flip phone? The silver one? Yeah. I remember that one, but yeah. But after a certain hour, because they said to Noah Michalowski, you can only text oh, after that's this so time. Funny. If they were out of network. Oh, yeah, Add a network. That was such a big deal. Like, yeah. what's your network? <laughs> so sorry. I'm be able to <laughs> We're in Verizon. <laughs> uh, yeah, Corey and I, you and I started on AT&T together. Uh-huh. Remember when I had the orange icon that looked like an X? Yeah. Yeah, that's where wow. we started. Man, me and Heather had those little chocolate phones, if you know, you know. I thought it was so cool. I could type I had without even looking at my finger. One. I had like a reddish one. Yeah, and I had the green yeah. one. Oh, I could text from my pocket. Uh-huh. A whole long conversation. Yeah, but this was old style keyboards. It's not the keyboards oh, of today. Press A three times to yeah. get to C. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wild. It was a different world. It was man. a different world when you had phone charms. Oh, oh I was. <laughs> Coach. <laughs> and they wore away. So could, it was all just silver. I remember when you used to get phones, they'd come in with the thing you could put on your belt and connect your phone. <laughs> Did you have one? <laughs> it came with the Nokia. Phone. Did you put it on your belt? No, but I never threw it away. I was like, I, I feel like you were nerdy this. enough to put it on your belt. <laughs> we went to the same school of five people. <laughs> I oh, love I my phone. I always got it, it taken away. 
That was when the it first was your thing birthday and you to. wake up and there's like 30 texts like, happy birthday. Happy I know. Birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Now it's my birthday and people are like. <laughs> On Facebook, HPD. <laughs> yeah. um, good salad time. Salad times. Mm-hmm. Cor- of course, my parents are just old enough not to really get phones. So Corey would get in trouble. And uh, we were twins. So she, I would look down. You know, like the little balconies yeah. in houses? And I, Corey would give me this look. It's the same look she gives me in a cookie class and something's <laughs> riled up. Do. And I'd, be, I'd go to her phone and I would text everybody in the contest. Do not text this number. Do not text this number. <laughs> then i clear out all the texts. <laughs> and it was over And every week my mom would be like, Had bring my cards up. And there was nothing on And Corey would do the second look. Of course, nothing was said. But it was like a confirmation. <laughs> yeah, like, do you? Was you? Going to <laughs> <laughs> of course, all the texts are like, what are you eating today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry for that blast from the past. <laughs> sorry. Anyways, we left off an inconsistency. I don't know how oh, we yeah. on MTV. <laughs> so being consistent in your marketing is good. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it. You know, my first day offers. A great way to be consistent is using these apps like Planner. I can't begin to stress to you how mm. much of the workload it takes off. If you can set one creative work, uh, creative flow, when you mm-hmm. get in a flow state, buzzword, uh, it really helps that your creative brain is dialed in. So for one or two hours, you can build out a whole month of content in a flow state yeah. and then just go back to your unflow state. And I will say, these holidays are every single year. <laughs> if you know you're going to be busy on Valentine's Day week, let's plan a week ahead. <laughs> They're not going to jump in at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> one thing I wanted to mention, these first three months, it's always weird. Now I've been doing this for enough years yeah. that I can see that these first three months trip people up for more than one reason. It's because Christmas was so crazy. It, and it, it is every year. It is. It's it is insanity. 10x, 10x what happens in January? 10x. So you feel... <laughs> 10xers. <laughs> Grand <Carlo. laughs> You feel that January is a failure. You feel like your audience yeah. is gone. No, no, no. We just fell back to what is the average yes. of the industry. And it, it ticks up throughout the year. A little bit dry in July. <laughs> July. Get everyone's your salad. <laughs> yeah. But what happens is in the first three months, the holidays fall on the half of the month. It does. So what you see right now, almost last day of January, mm-hmm. is people are like, my ho- my Valentine's Day sales are not good. No, no, no. The audience hasn't yeah. locked in to Valentine's Day yet. We were used to people pre-ordering a month out from mm-hmm. Christmas, a month out from Thanksgiving and Halloween. Now we're in these weird half holidays. Because I was saying Q4 holidays fall at the last day of each mm-hmm. month. So we have October yeah. 1st. Last Thursday, November, in November, which uh-huh. Black Friday is the next day, yeah. and then December and um, you're right, you know whatever the exploding one, <laughs> and then we go into January where there's kind of no major. You have a month holiday. and a half for till the next major cookie holiday. But your wallet's saying like, look at the dry it's <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden we get Valentine's Day, which is a nice little bump, but is a last minute holiday. Ask mm-hmm. Wegmans how it knows yeah. when it reprices those long stem roses, mm-hmm. and then we okay, after February it gets kind of dry again we got we we, got some things in march but it's hit or miss if you're again halfway through march and halfway through april and halfway through may these are the halfway throughs which make if the month prior feel like it does i love that people are deciding like right now they just figured out that the what's the big game in the football the super bowl (laughs) (laughs) the big game in the football (laughs) Valentine's Day are on the same week. So they're like, what do I do? What do I do? (laughs) She's the one that's going to give you the most cash. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Very interesting for sure. So sorry. Be (laughs) be consistent. (laughs) On the field and live. (laughs) And go team. (laughs) Uh, But that takes us to Corey's eight big social media snafus. Social media faux puns. However, okay, so Jan- February 1 is what? Thursday? Wednesday? Is that tomorrow? tomorrow? Oh, my goodness. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I know that because I got my child support payment yesterday. <laughs> right, Rick. We're going to spend this nice all on the kids. See you again next month. <laughs> kids going to get some of these shows. <laughs> um, but February 1 is when I think a lot and, – and I know you're thinking like, no, Target since celebrating Valentine's Day since <laughs> mid-December. Yeah, a lot of the people aren't – that's not – that's us people cookies. trying to right-size inventory. Cookies rating the right. dollar spot. <laughs> yeah. Major corporations are also trying to move product as well. Mm-hmm. But our consumer is just coming off of uh, – January is a sad month. It's where you're going to pay back your bills from Christmas. Our older sister's birthday is January 15th. And she is – she makes us – she says, everyone get your attitude right. Yeah. 
I want smiles. I want good gifts. I don't want some cast off Christmas crap. (laughs) So she makes us, and I can tell you because she's so used to us being like, here's your crap. (laughs) Sorry, it's in Christmas wrap. (laughs) I had it left over. Uh, So yeah, your audience is doing the same thing. So here is an email. It's not a question. It's actually a great. Well, you're just just booping around, aren't you? Just booping around. Kim says, I just discovered you in the podcast. And at this point, she was on episode 32. It's actually on January 15th, which is Ashley's birthday. We were trying to get in the spirit noise. But I thought her email is interesting. She said, I'm sure if you reply to this email, I'll hear about it in six months. (laughs) So she said, you just advocated in this podcast, episode 32, for posting and emailing to an annoyance level. And of course, all caps, you're so right. Kim, email me anytime, even in six months. She said, I'm a shoe person and I only wore three inch stilettos. It was my signature, the girl with the shoes. Then Facebook shows me an ad for these made out of recycled plastic shoes. They're cute, but flats. Bleh. Kept scrolling. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know what brand you're talking about? No. Well, she'll tell us at the end. Over the next few weeks, I keep seeing the ads. Okay, how much? I click on the ad. They're $150. Whoa. She says, are sticker they, shock. Are they the fancy flats everyone loves? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Uh, don't get me wrong. I'll pay for the shoes. I have two pairs of Lubus, which I'm now stealing Lou away. Lubus. Oh. A pair of Lubus in my account. I always say it wrong anyway. And she says, I have a hundred pairs of other brands. Card carrying DSW Premier Awards <laughs> member here. Uh, but I'm not going to pay that much for flats. Nope. Uh-uh. No way. Hard pass. The ads continue. Okay. What's so great about these shoes? I found a blog post that talked about the comfort, free returns if you don't wear them outside. Wow. Oh, interesting. And here's $20 off. <gasps> Welp. 29 pairs of these shoes oh, later. My. And I can say, well played, Rothy's. Oh, well that was right. <laughs> Next to my twin boys, you're my favorite twins. And thanks so much for all you do. I haven't officially gone into business yet. Maybe by podcast. Yeah, by the time you hear this, we'll be chairman. <laughs> but I am marinating in the knowledge. When I retire from principaling in 167 days, I'll put your advice oh, wow. in the practice. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Great. If you guys don't know what Rothy's are, don't look them up. They're very cute. They are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... That is how. So what she's referencing is like, was it 22, 21 touch points before somebody converts? Yeah, a lot. A lot of you guys are like, I made a single post and nobody bought. I what know. gifts? Yeah. Uh, 21. 21 touch points. So you're like, 21 posts? No. One email. One post. One story. One Instagram feed. One reel. One TikTok. One ad. One ad. Yeah. And a lot of these one community posts. And now you can easily make 21 touch points that all look diverse yeah. and different. Uh-huh. What's going on on the watch? Love Replica services was having another discount. <laughs> Replica services. You see Replica services coming out bigger squares? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Acorn already had big squares. She does have. But those are for cake people, right? Do you have any of the big squares? No, I only like the small ones because they fit in this yeah. little cupboard. Because if you had a bunch of different sizes, it would be hard I to would, store yeah. It. Okay. Well, that was hilarious and I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you, Kim. If you're listening to this, we are well into the future now. I hope you're retired and having a grand old life with your Lubus. I like that phrase. And your Rothies. Oh, yeah, the Rothies. I, I'd look at this. I think even mom has a pair. I think someone has a pair. I got to work through my cloud We nine, are. Yes, yeah, girl. we got a cloud nines going on. Um, Okay, so look, you want to jump into sponsors? Tell me about well, it. We're just core, really then. just going. Well, Corey, what we're do you just, want All right, bracing myself. First sponsor is AE Core Mackers. If you're looking to up your photos, to gain more interest on your post, to capture those eyes as people scroll, you need to look into an AE Core Backers. It's a photography backdrop and it's food safe mat, you name it. I poured chocolate syrup on mine, then took it outside and just put it under the hose and it wiped off clean. Would you just I call couldn't me? Like- <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so, so well. <laughs> You're as well. Um, <laughs> wow, I can't believe I didn't know what that was to the left. Which you kick. Okay, go on. Uh, a course. You can get 20% off by using the code sugar cookie at checkout. If you want to see a uh, AE Core in action. You can just go and look up the hashtag on Instagram, AE Core Backers. There's over a thousand posts of people using the backers, and you can honestly really shop from those posts because you can see what looks good against your drop cookies, what looks against well, that's cake. A great point. Yeah, I know. I always that's use that. Right? Let the people experiment for you <laughs> yeah. with their wallets. Um, I forgot my podcast poll. My skipping around. Do you want me to do it? No, you do the next one. I want to tell Eddie, go. 
Eddie is it. Thunderstorm. It is very rainy here in the north of Virginia. Corey and I are cooped up. Uh, Eddie is a direct to food edible printer. There are many copycats, but there are none like him. There's none. You know what I've been targeted in? What? These, these like pens that print. Man. On food, yeah, I know. The comment section is abysmal, and it feels like a hackathon <laughs> in your wallet when you go to the checkout. However, Eddie is not cheap, and that's because he is talented. The man knows his worth. I'm just kidding. He's a machine. But I'm right. Yeah. There's a, a tag I'm going to help you, but <laughs> I really want to do my podcast. Okay. So Eddie, at me. Eddie is not going to take your money. They're actually owned by a big company called <laughs> Primera. <laughs> 3,000 of your money. <laughs> Eddie, please don't drop this is podcast sponsors. That was other. Eddie has a direct to food printer. It's amazing. Look up the hashtag Eddie the Edible Printer on Instagram and see what people are printing. We were printing on M and M's, chips, cookies, royal icing, buttercream, Mentos, men's toast. <laughs> We're going to get some bad podcasts. <laughs> okay, the last and final is Bakety Bakes Meringue Powder. You can use code TWINS at checkout for 10% off. Yep. It is really nice. Corey really likes it. So much so that she won't even use it on our class days. <laughs> she only uses it for custom orders because it's so ritzy. Uh, but yeah, I got to say, I've taste tested all of Corey's cookies. Those cookies you made the other day. Yeah. Over, weren't they bake? so good? Delicious. Yeah, baked. Delicious. Mm. Uh, if you're wondering, well, I want a recipe for meringue. It's just my meringue powder. It's not working. Use the recipe on the back of her bag. And just a tip, I've actually taken one tablespoon out of my mix, she said. That was her tip, hmm. to give me a little bit more time before it crusts one over. One tablespoon out of the meringue powder? Yeah, so you put a third a cup, and then I just take a tablespoon out and put it back in the bag. Oh, smart. So that saves you ingredients cost. Yeah, <laughs> so would you do that for your customs, or you do that for your classes? No, I do that for myself, to give me a little oh. bit more time if I'm doing wet on wet. It doesn't crust as oh, fast. No. Keep in mind, Corey has a dehydrator. So you can dry it faster, right? You can. I have a tabletop fan dehydrator dehumidifier. Okay, We're so, going to get these puppies dry. <laughs> it's going to get so <laughs> Okay, that takes us to the podcast. Don't forget, did you say the AE core discount code? I did, you big old thing. I was looking at my podcast poll, which brings me to my <laughs> podcast poll. How long have you been baking mm. sugar cookies? So we have 376 votes. I just posted it this morning. And... In the sugar cookie marketing group, we have 45% of people say they've been baking cookies for one to three years. Wow. I think that has a lot to do with COVID lockdowns. I think so. And, and with video becoming so much popular, you you saw those videos. So and much like, popular. So much popular. <laughs> What's your kick? The popular is. <laughs> uh, here's the crazy thing. It goes 45% of people have been baking for one to three years. Then the second highest vote is 21% at four to six years. And 13% at 7 to 10 years. Then it goes way down that the next one is 7% at less than a year. Wow. And 7% at more than 17. Wow, we got the gamut. We're running the gamut. And a tie for 3% between 11 and 13 years and 14 to 17 years. So comprising 45% of this, you know, small poll. Yeah. uh, Gallup poll. What is a Gallup poll? Gallup kind of this Gallup poll? poll of the Heather Cookie marketing social media platform. One to three years would be the average of that group. Wow. Which makes a lot of sense. It does. Do you think it is new because of COVID or that's just when most people are exploring the marketing and sales side of things? I will say I think quarantine did have a big take in that. I will say that probably a lot of people burn out and quit and that's why you're seeing lower numbers than that would explain this gap for a little bit of yeah, this Yeah, I think so. Time. I think people can really have burnout and maybe come back or maybe never come back. I also wonder if the more than 17 years being at roughly 8% is people reaching retirement and getting a side hobby oh, going yeah, again I wonder. for like a I more wonder. fun side hustle. Yeah. Uh, we'll never know. That's just speculation. You could do another podcast. <laughs> uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> okay, so we've done... Oh, I wanted to talk about some Facebook lives we have coming up. I just yeah. posted one. I've got another one to post, and I'm working on a third person to teach nice. one. Nice. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Saw that. I need saw to take it. that one. So we have Nicole Stolva, Stolfi. I've never heard of this before. A virtual pop-up. It's kind of Honestly, like someone said, I think is this- Mary D did it a few years she ago. She did? I want to put it past yeah. Mary D. It's a smart idea. Uh-huh. So 
If you watched Stolfa's original long time ago one, she was this pop-up queen where people are hiding in bushes and surprising her. And she's like, no, you got to stand in line. <laughs> yeah. But now she's moved to this virtual version and she's actually hosting one on the day. No way. Yeah, so she's going to walk us through it before she actually oh, posts so it on her fun. page. Oh, that's so fun. Then Kia, she's in the cookie yeah. car, is giving us a brick and mortar tour. No way. Yeah, yeah. so you can kind of see. I know a lot of people's goal is like, what if? Yeah. What if this yeah. becomes a brick and mortar opportunity, which is a whole other ball game. When we talk brick and mortar, we talk about overhead collateral yeah. leases. A lot of cottage people are sheltered from that stress. <laughs> so Kira's going to walk us through that. And then Andrea Forte may, if we push her and give her peer pressure, teach us about QuickBooks. I know. Uh, I hate QuickBooks, but we do use it. It is how you do accounting and bookkeeping in small business. Yeah. There are many other options. However, it seems like QuickBooks, unfortunately, covers a lot of the bases. True. Heather has been fighting with the accountant for years now. She, she just wanted... assumed I knew how the app to work. Like, I had not a but clue. But you wanted to use the fresh books. And she's like, no, why are you giving me more work? I need you to use QuickBooks. Yeah, so I still use FreshBooks and QuickBooks. <laughs> okay. A lot of people use Wave Financial. Never experienced myself uh-huh. as free. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I see people using like apps and kind of piecing them yeah. together. I think you, c- I don't think Square does accounting. I don't think like. So. I think it does invoicing yeah. and payment processing. Maybe it puts it in a nice. Yeah. So when we're talking about accounting, I know I talk about you need a budget. It's not accounting software. It's budgeting software. Yeah. So you see a lot. I don't think QuickBooks is budgeting software. It's accounting software. Yeah. So unfortunately, it looks like most of the time you'll need a couple apps to do. I can say there's apps that do everything. There's very few apps that do all things or at least all things well. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately for recurring payments, right? Um, but that's what's coming up. And then I'll be posting today what? three events. The happy hours at Cookie Con, Ohio, and Orlando. Now, these are fun because they're sponsored by Heather Campbell Berkshire is her name in the groups. And she is a Disney a planner. Don't. Yeah, she's actually in <laughs> yeah. Disney right now. Uh, and she sent me somebody with the last, their first name is Miracle. No way. Yeah, a little name tag of one of the twins. Oh, no way. I'm secretly hoping she said, hey, listen, can I take a name tag? There's these twins. Awesome. <laughs> Miracle. You may be featured on the podcast. However, she, if she, you want to plan a Disney trip along, so the Orlando Cookie Con is in August. It is in Orlando, which yeah. is where Disney Hop, World. Hop, skip, and a jump. Disney World? Disneyland. Yes. Disney no, World. Disney World. Disney World. Because you'd always get in the car when we were little kids and said, yes. let's try to Disney yes, World. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so it's where Disney World is, and she can help you plan that. I'll have more information if you want to reach out to her for that. But we will be at both Cookie Cons. And am I under the impression that it's free to hire a Disney planner? I don't know. Not a cold thought till next week <laughs> when I got some confirmation. When but, we did it, it was. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. Well, Heather can answer that for you. But True. My, why plan it yourself when she's doing, she's scouting it out, right? Believe now. me, I tried to do it myself, and that's why I said I got to have a Disney plan. Oh, it's a lot. It's insane. And now if you're adding cookie con in there as well, and you're bringing kids or family, yeah. and you're trying to make this more of a vacation, which a lot of people did when Corey and I went to the Orlando cookie con two years ago. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of people did turn it into a family vacation. Yeah. You're already there. You already paid for the plane I tickets. I know. Get a little cookie, get a little of Disney, Uh a little Mickey. And there's something called a magic band. Please get that. (laughs) You did not have the magic band. It apparently opens every door. (laughs) And if you don't have it. Imagine how many doors weren't open (laughs) when you didn't have one. Corey and I were like, do do do, we're here to see Mickey. And And I don't uh, don't want to waste money on a magic band. (laughs) You're like, you need to give your left kitty to get it now. And then we'll be having a Meet the Baker cookie club at the end of February. And that is you getting in front of a camera. Hate it. Getting in front of that iPhone and taking a photo of yourself, and we're going to post it on the same day. Do you want a photo or like a reel? I will do a... <laughs> That's your turn. <laughs> you tell I have to decide. <laughs> but that will be on February 24th. Again, you can do whatever you want, but you will see if you put your face on that screen that people will like it. The best part is we do kind of like this engagement. the best part of waking up? It's called to turn your cup. Your <laughs> cup. <laughs> cup. <laughs> you want to do an elephant again? <laughs> They're not right. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it on the hundredth episode. <laughs> Tell them about the cookie classes. 
Oh, yeah. Corey and I have uh, worked very hard. Uh, Sweet Pink Cobb has worked harder, though, mm-hmm. uh, to launch a cookie classes kit. Now, it is a part of the cookie college, but I got to say. Listen, when impressed. you said it's a part of the cookie college, people are like, do I have to sign oh, up for my the cookie apologies. college? Might no. as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can get it by itself yeah. for $63, or you can get that and everything else the cookie college offers, because that is included in that membership mm-hmm. at $76. But if you're like, girls, I don't want anything but classes. I'm here for big margins, big paydays. Then the cookie class kits is awesome. Now, Corey just posted yesterday the designs for March, so and you cool. guys are going to love it. I gotta say, think round things, yeah. round birds, <laughs> round shoes, round birdhouses, round flowers. <laughs> yeah, it's a very round flower. The flower is super cute. I know uh, she did so good on that. She did good. So she what? She's printing those out. I, she they're sent. She already sent them out today. So Corey and I are working feverishly to get these posted before the class time. So we're we're catching up. Yeah, I'm working on April now too. And then, so that means we'll be at our yes. goal of being a month out giving. I would love to give everyone like a six-week runtime. But the good thing with the spring classes, it's spring. It's all yeah. spring. You could get just that class. Of course, when you sign up, you get access to anything that's currently available. But let's say you get the spring class, cancel your membership. So after the first, mm-hmm. you know, buy the one class, then teach it three times, then swing back in and yeah. sign up again to get whatever summer and Then you pay off your cutters because you taught yeah. it three times. Yeah, yeah. So you pay off. Whatever else. The more you you teach this class. Corey and I sell class tickets. We had a bump up for prices $75 a ticket. Mm -hmm. The cookie class kits is everything you need to do and post and have and sell to sell tickets. That's only $63. Think copy marketing photos heather has really good at photoshop takes my little cookie photos and will duplicate them make something cute you had some puns you did for the valentine's so day cute. one i thought yeah, were really, adorable really. um you can what else is involved? oh the powerpoint step-by-step copy, PowerPoint. event break copy event break cover mm-hmm. facebook cover um my email drip campaign it's nothing scientific but it works i've been using it for years it's just a reminder to make sure we get butts and seats i'm not doing refunds yeah. and our refund policy that's uh, so all you have to do is really bake the cookies to show up and teach <laughs> get a venue do. <laughs> yeah and our shop list so exactly the things that we bought to teach classes ourselves again find you a cheaper alternative if you want yeah, but we found sure. that this works and our stuff we we've had it for years we keep just reusing it so uh-huh. we have these metal plates i hate when sprinkles go a flying yeah it's a metal so plate we, it's a plate I guess so. Yeah. But we put the cookies on one and the sprinkles on the other. Really, and I say, really helps. Pick up your little pan, bring it to you, yeah. and do your sprinkles over the pan. Yeah. Like one time we didn't. It was chaos. 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 Mm-hmm. Sprinkles were in places where sprinkles should be. <laughs> True. Uh, the vacuum had a job that day. So that has just launched. If you sign up today, you get January and February. And since you'll sign up for a month, it's a monthly membership, uh-huh. I can guarantee you you're going to get April or March. March's content uh-huh. in the next 30 days. And April will be an Easter theme just so you could plan around that. Mm-hmm. Some people want to do Easter. Some people want to do spring. But we did a vote in the college and most everyone said Easter. <laughs> It does sell well. It does. Uh, we are we're doing two Easter classes. I know. We, our asked. Easter class was so cute all the time. It is so cute. It's yeah. a shame that we are departing. But we did promise our audience that we're finally updating the content. Yeah. I have to tell you, my twin tryst, I'm just jumping oh, in yeah. here. Yeah, well, let's go. To the gym, I always wear a jacket. Mm-hmm. I always wear a jacket 24-7 anyways. But to the gym, I wear... Can you describe your jacket that you wear 24-7 anyways to people? This green one? Yeah. I want you to picture a jacket that cuts you off at the most unflattering point on your entire body. I want you to like look at your calf and go about two and a half inches up. That's where this jacket ends on. Court. I walked into T-Mobile. Looks- I walked into T-Mobile and the guy's like, "Hey, you're back." I said, "How did you know it was me?" He said, "The green jacket." I said, Not thank you for way. noticing my ugly jacket. And he was like, no, it's kind of like your style. I said, this isn't stylish. Okay, I want you to think of a Christmas bell now in a pukey army green. Michelin man green. <laughs> yeah, it has like little sections. It flares out wildly. It really does flare out. Corey's it used to have wearing... like a cinch belt, but I've long since Corey's lost it. Corey only pairs it with capris. Don't you see the capri, <laughs> then the bottom of the jacket. The pasty is what really, adds, what really like, adds, like, adds to it is when the hood goes inverted. <laughs> I have a bubble. <laughs> and then it's like zipped up haphazardly over the jacket. <laughs> if you saw Corey, you would ask her if she needs assistance. <laughs> it's 
my I wore it every winter, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways, go on with your story. I this, wore not. The pocket this... is even unzipped, and <laughs> so I can always have my hands. It's like it's about fifty tissues in there. Just if you me. took all of Lubu style and inverted it to be dysfunctionality, <laughs> worse. Hey, I am comfortable. <laughs> I didn't have to wash this bad boy. I was even offending myself. What about the little? And also, just to paint the rest of the picture, it's got a furry. <laughs> it's a furry. The last one I had, my husband dried it, which you're not supposed to dry. It, so it made it like this. Really, it looked like a raccoon was stuck in the back. <laughs> It was really now it's you can't do it. So you know staying it up. But I went to the gym and I was wearing the sugar cookie marketing you jacket. The gap? I got it from the gap. <laughs> Clearance. <laughs> I went to anytime someone says, I like your jacket, I'm like, okay, you're a liar. <laughs> you're on my way. <laughs> okay, I'll tip. <laughs> <laughs> went to the gym <laughs> and I was wearing the sugar cookie marketing jacket that we wore to Cookie Con. Now it's my gym. Oh, the pink sure. one? No, this one. But remember, you played the <laughs> jacket under the jacket. <laughs> that was worse. Because <laughs> I would look like a duplicate for seven days a week. I have seven of these jackets <laughs> and I'm always wearing them. But I wore it and some person was like, What is your jacket mean? But I didn't want to be like, Yeah, we're cold. <laughs> So I said, oh, I bake. So she's like, oh, I would love to test your cookies. She probably asked, it was a personal trainer, for these cookies for two solid months. So finally I was like, I'm going to bring them some cookies so she stops asking. Then she said, I took three months off from the gym. And then when I came back, she's like, I've been wanting to take your class. Do you have a class? I have four people who want to sign up. They just signed up. So yeah, should we add in an extra class? Corey said it has to be our minimum is four people to yeah. show up because then it's kind of weird. Yeah. You get each get a twin. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't do much for you. And here's Corey interjecting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we ended up selling now mm-hmm. five and I think we'll sell out the remaining Yeah, so days. wearing your clothes. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's it's a good <laughs> Don't be calling that and you'll be SOL. <laughs> Uh, I am uh, so wedding. <laughs> I can just put my jackets on. Yeah. I don't ever have a twin dress. Yes, you do. What? Talk about your Shakti helmet. <laughs> the Shakti headband. <laughs> so the Shakti is acupressure. Unlike acupuncture, you're just lying on this bed of nails. Mm-hmm. It's plasticky nails. It's not even nails at all. However, it hurts so good type deal. The thought being, if pain is everywhere, then pain is nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe your body, I don't know, if it's just a bunch of hocus pocus, but it works. I've been doing it for two weeks now. Found out they came out with a headband. Do you know, like, your forehead ever feels, like, at one what, time pressure? I went to a, like, massage kiosk mall place. Weird. And the guy, yeah, I know. It truly had to be I, I would love to, to do that, me. but I don't like that they put it in the busiest part of the mall and everyone's staring at you. Listen, man, you got a jacket on. <laughs> yeah, where are we staring at you? <laughs> Uh, he massaged my forehead which i was like dude whatever you want to do but it felt amazing because i think there's a lot of tension pressure points yeah yeah so i got the shakti headband which is these little prickles but you will have a indention i want to let you know anything that touches a shakti mat has a million little (laughs) posts it is not something you would do and then go into public Uh, but like people lay their arms on it if you have I don't know if it works or not if it's a placebo fine Hi. fine Hi. let me take my sugar pill and call mm-hmm. it a night mm-hmm. that would be mine my interest I guess have you worn it yet I ordered it today oh out of an email I can't wait to see what your forehead looks like Shut what if you get one pimple from it you won't wear it oh, again then, I then know me. you Shakti <laughs> Shakti you're gonna be an ankle bracelet <laughs> yeah. enjoy my knee high top <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. Do we cover everything? Because you would just bamboozled about. Bamboozled. We're already at an hour seven. Oh, I better go get my child. Go get your child in your jacket. They're probably like, ma'am, do you have a... I wear this to get him in every day, and I know that they're judging me. Like, oh, there goes there. <laughs> there goes that weird green bell. <laughs> It's because it flares, I guess. It's what but throws me it's because it's long. We're walking through Tyson's Mall, if you know the area. It's affluent, I guess. And Corey and I are looking like vagabonds. And I, Corey's like, look at that girl's long jacket. Yeah, it was so pretty. Corey's like, can you find that there's a patch and label on her shoulder? Yeah. So we're walking uncomfortably close. Can I get a look? I know. Trying to, like, look over. Yeah. She's probably like, whoa. Yeah. What's going on? So we're sitting in a restaurant later that overlooks the general walkways, and there's a man with the same patch on. Different jacket style. Heather Holland. I said, sir, sir, can I have some more? I said, hey, where's your jacket from? And he's like, Canadian Goose. Canadian Goose. And we're like, oh, that's that's cool. Thanks. Let me Google that real quick. Her jacket was $1,700. $1,700. So back to the gap clearance we went. (laughs) 
<laughs> one day, guys. <laughs> one, remember how I bought Heather's those lupus? I can't wait to the repo. Oh, man, get some, oh you're on clouds. You Koi bought her new on clouds. She bought the water reinforced ones. But it toe. has a toe reinforcement, so we'll your be big curious. toe doesn't get wet, but also it might not pop through the top. I'm curious. I'm curious I'm as curious. well. Okay, goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>